We had some rain overnight. The field was covered. We've had a little mist this morning, just under 70 degrees, a slight breeze. And there's Todd Haley. He was the mastermind offensively for that Arizona Cardinal team that made it all the way to the Super Bowl a season ago. And Andy Reid is a two-time NFL head coach of the year, now in his 11th season. Flip of the coin was won by the Eagles, and rookie Ryan Suckup will be kicking off for the Kansas City Chiefs. And deep back will be the ex-New England Patriot Ellis Hobbs, who last year was number two in the NFL in kick returns. It's the Chiefs who have lost six consecutive games dating back to last year against the Eagles, who last week lost here to New Orleans. From the one-yard line, this is Hobbs. Buckley with the block up ahead, and he was knocked a little bit off his stride by Belcher, a rookie out of Maine, a 25-yard return. Michael Vick not in on this first play. It will be first and ten. McCoy is in the backfield. Macklin makes his first start, and here is a pass to the tight end, Selleck. Hit at the 32. Over there they have the linebacker, Corey Mays. And, yep, Michael Vick will be spread as a receiver here with Cobb as the quarterback. Second down and two. The fullback is in as well, Leonard Weaver. Vick on the move, the fake to him, and they give off to LaShawn McCoy, who is thrown for a loss of about a yard on the play, and they had Vrabel, among others, over there for Kansas City. Vick is out. You see the assortment of receivers. Nickel secondary for the Chiefs. Kevin Kahn gets a block from Justice. Knocked away in the play. Flowers was right there, and he was working on the intended receiver to Sean Jackson. So it's a uh, punting situation. For the first time, three and out for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, and really good defense by the Kansas City Chiefs. Excellent recognition by Brandon Flowers. When we talked to him last night, he says, hey, they're going to throw a lot of different formations and alignments at us, but it's all window dressing. We have to be able to recognize the play on that one. He was dialed in. Sam Rocker will punt the ball deep back as Bobby Wade for the Kansas City Chiefs. And Wade drifting back to the 14, hang time of 4.1. The ex Minnesota Viking and Chicago Bears swirls his way out to the 23 yard line and hit out there by Akeem Jordan along with the long snapper. Bradley, a wide receiver, is in the backfield. Copper is atop his screen. Four defensive backs. First and ten. Bradley on the move. And he gets a block right off the bat from Wade, and he is brought down by Samuel along with Michael on a gain of five. Cox is now in the backfield. Make it second down and six. Cox in the backfield with Larry Johnson. Couple tight ends. Johnson is hit and working his way through was Trent Cole on that defensive line. He's a terrific defensive. Hanson becomes the fifth defensive back. You see the assortment of receivers. Jackie Battle is in the backfield and now he goes in motion. Quick jump by Howard. Here comes Parker. The pressure was there. The penalty flag was thrown across the way. Castle didn't have a chance to breathe. Oh, my. They were coming through that offensive line as if it were a sieve. Offside, number 90, defense. Five-yard penalty, first and 10. I Kansas thought, City. I thought Perry got there, uh, rather that uh, Howard got there pretty quickly through yeah. that line. Easy to get pressure on the quarterback when you jump offsides a moment before the ball is snapped, and you can see Howard was grasping at the ankles of Matt Castle. A lot of pressure on the Philadelphia Eagles corners in this game today because they're going to blitz a lot. Even Andy Reid said, yeah, we got to blitz more this week. They didn't come after Drew Brees, but they're definitely going to come after Matt Castle. Charles in the backfield, Nichols secondary, Jaquay Parker on the defensive line, first and ten. This is Wade, met by Samuel and hit by Horselio Hansen. There's a flag. It's a gain of a couple yards up to the 36. Flag was thrown at the 40-yard line. A look at Bobby Wade. Offensive pass interference, number 83, 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. That's Mark Bradley. Bradley. Yeah. yeah, watch the block before the ball is thrown. See, he's already blocking right there, and then the ball is is being thrown. So you can't en engage with that defender before the ball is thrown from the quarterback. Parker stays on the defensive line, still five in the secondary. It's first down and 20. Battle in the backfield with Larry Johnson. And Johnson, who played at Penn State, 
Roderick Bunkley throws him for a loss of a yard. Back to the 22. Oh, they're really getting a lot of penetration through that Kansas City Chiefs offensive line. They're going to try to plug every single gap along the way and really get to the quarterback. Defensively, this uh, Philadelphia defense is ranked in the top 10 statistically for the last three consecutive seasons. Everything's predicated on pressuring the quarterback and then producing turnovers on the back end. We saw that week one against Carolina, where they had five sacks and then five interceptions came away in that game with seven takeaways. Abiyamiri is in as the left defensive end. Out is Parker, second down and 21. That's Cox, the fullback in motion. Wow, looks like a delay again. Delay again. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. You just saw him say, come on, Matt. Yeah, they have to do a better job of, I think, relaying the play from the sideline, getting it into Matt. Matt told us yesterday they had this problem last week. When we spoke with Matt Castle yesterday, he said, hey, we had some technical difficulties where the speaker in that helmet wasn't working. But I'm sure Todd Haley said, hey, we can't use that as an excuse because right now they're facing second and very long. Five defensive backs, second down and 26. The tight end Cottom was in there as a split receiver. This is Larry Johnson again, not much up the middle. They got Patterson in there limiting him to a gain of a yard. And mark him at the 19 yard line. Yeah, there's such little margin for trouble for Kansas City in a game like this. Yeah, and then you're in a third and 25 situation. You expect the Eagles to come after you. And even if they drop in coverage, they're not going to allow you to throw the ball down the field. And this is where the decision making of Matt Castle really does come into play. You take what the defense is going to give you. You may have to concede here and go ahead and punt. That wouldn't be a bad thing. Certainly better than turning the football over. Luckily, is out. And they got Parker in there along with Abby Murray now, who's on that tackle position. Third and 25, they need the 44. Here comes Parker, down goes Castle. Back at the eight yard line. A loss of 10, and Kansas City's got a punt on their first possession. And other than a turnover, this is maybe the second worst thing to happen, to lose even more yards getting sacked deep inside your own territory. And watch the pressure coming in from the blind side, and then they're finally able to get Castle on the ground. Again, he felt the pressure, but you could see they pinched the pocket from both ends. There was nowhere for Castle to go. Cole quick to punt. He had a good week last week against the Oakland Raiders. Deep back is Deshaun Jackson, one of the best in the NFL. 47-yard line, he gets it. You think the Eagles are going to show a lot on offense today? I think with Donovan McNabb out, I think this is a time for them to test some of those creative plays that they've been working on through the OTAs and training camp. Chiefs in the nickel. Leggett is the fifth defensive back. You see the assortment of receivers for Cobb on first and ten. Knocked away. They had the blitz in that nickel back. Leggett was flying in there on the face of Cobb. It'll be second down and ten. Cobb today taking the place of Donovan McNabb. Coming off statistically a terrific year back in 08. But he's got the broken rib from week one against Carolina. Yeah, he's going to have a little bit more time to rest up. But with him out, think about it. You don't have to worry about disrupting the timing of the base offense. And so now it gives you free reign as a play caller for Marty Morningwig, the offense coordinator and head coach Andy Reid, to really sample a lot of these plays going into the bye week. It is second down and 10. Blocked by Justice, blocked by Weaver, and that's caught. Jeremy Macklin, the rookie out of Missouri. Hit over there by Flowers, whacked by Corey Mays. He picks up four yards to the 43. Cobb that time was very poised and patient, very little pressure. Look at the protection. as He's throwing off his back foot there and throwing away, but still able to find Macklin right in the crease of the defense. Coach Andy Reid has had his eye on Cobb for a long time, not just in the fact that he drafted him. Yeah, you know, he was watching him in college and, and decided that, you know, hey, this kid could play and sort of tracked his career at the University of Houston where he said he ran just about every style of offense. Nickel secondary, third and six, and Cobb. That's caught by Jason Avant, fumbles the ball out of bounds at the 31. He was tackled by Jared Page. Enough yards for the first down. And on the play, give them 10. They'll move the chain. Ball security is at a premium today. We did have rain through the night. The ground's a little moist. But if you're Jason Avant, as we watch the throw from Cobb under pressure, you got to hold on to this ball. Jerry Page able to get it out. Ball rolls out of bounds. We always talk about turnovers being the great equalizer. As the Eagles come into this game highly favored, turnovers would be the one thing to spoil the day. Ted Tyler comes back in as the nose guard. You see Vic is back in, too. 
Here we go. The quarterback, yeah, buckle up from the 34, first and 10. Macklin is in motion. Vic, good block by Sellick. He was the tight end. The tackle was made by Flowers. He's down to the 27, picks up seven yards in the play. Cobb is a receiver, the quarterback at the bottom of your screen. It's a direct snap and goes to Rashawn McCoy. Will run up the middle, hit by Tyler, whacked by Page. On second down and three, he picks up eight. He's down to the 19, another first down. The direct snap to LaShawn McCoy, and it's a read option play. That's the element you want to watch. Watch the fake handoff here, and that's where he's going to read it, but then he'll take it up the middle. And so that's the deal. Here's the fake handoff. It's a read option. Comes underneath the pulling guard and taking it right up. It's a zero gut right up the middle through that defense. First and ten, and it's LaShawn McCoy again. Oh, and he runs outside. The rookie from Pitt stiff arms his way into Brown. Out of bounds at the five. An exciting player with a 14-yard pickup, McCoy, who played two years at Pitt but scored 36 touchdowns for Dave Wanstead, makes it first and goal. He's just another addition in terms of the speed and a weapon on this offense in place of Brian Westbrook out of today's game. So with McCoy coming in and guys like Macklin, they give you a lot of speed and elusive ability to make tacklers miss in the open field, but also you can get very creative just to get the ball in their hands. Michael Vick is coming. You take a look at McCoy, who's had runs of 14 and 8 yards on this drive. They got a 10-yard pass to Avant. The Eagles just called a timeout. They've taken out the quarterback, Cobb. They have brought in Michael Vick. They've also brought in another offensive lineman, Stacey Andrews. First and goal at the 5. Seventh play of the drive. LaShawn McCoy's been terrific on it, which began back at the Kansas City 48. You see the full house. Look at this. McCoy is next to Vick. The extra lineman is Andrews on the right side. Michael Vick. Here comes Glenn Dorsey. That's incomplete. And they're looking on the near side for Weaver. The coverage by Brandon Carr. Second down and goal. And Vick took a lick. <laughs> the, the defenders <laughs> teed off on him. Got to make a little bit faster read here. Faster decision. See Dorsey's up on him right away. Then he takes a hit. He was able to get that ball out of bounds. But boy. <laughs> Got a little bit of dirt on the jersey. Chiefs are sticking with four defensive backs. Dorsey and Tyler and the first round pick out of LSU. Tyson Jackson on the defensive line. Cobb is back in. Second and goal at the five. Cobb is a receiver bottom of the screen. McCoy is back there to get the snap. Andrews with the ball. And he corkscrews in for the wow. touchdown. Wow, what a play is right. Ali got a hand on him but why not McCoy he authored a great drive with some good runs he has a five yard touchdown run there and what he gives you is the ability and the elusiveness to make defenders miss he's not an easy tackle and watch where they make contact with him right there about the three yard line but he's able to turn and spin and come off Tom Baha Lee and still power it into the end zone has to be pleasing for the head coach Andy Reid and McCoy grew up in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the same high school that former Eagle Ricky Waters played at. He grew up an Eagle and a Steeler fan. He's thrilled to be here in Philadelphia. Here's the extra point now by David Akers, the 11-year veteran. We should be keeping track, Solomon, of the many different offensive looks the Eagles give us today. You're going to get a lot of oh, them. And goodness, Andy Reid, yeah. what did he tell us when we met with him? He said, hey, it's fun. He said, with all the weapons we have on this offense, this provides us an opportunity to get the ball into their hands. And boy, is he taking advantage of it. Look at Andy Reid, who uh, was an assistant with the Green Bay Packers. And before he went to Green Bay, back in the early part of the 90s, he was at the University of Missouri as an offensive line coach, as David Akers has the ball teed up. Dan Trell Savage is deep back for the Kansas City Chiefs. Both he and Charles are up today. Again, Bo is out with the hamstring injury. And the three-time Pro Bowler, Akers. Savage out of Oklahoma State from the three. The block by Belcher. Tackle made by Hansen. Joselio Hansen makes it at the 32, a 30 yard return. All those guys were provided a road to work their way back into the NFL, given a second chance, if you will. It's first and 10. Cox is the fullback. Good block by Larry Johnson. Here comes Matt Castle running for his life and out of bounds at about the 33 yard line. The player from Los Angeles. 
And he picks up on the play a yard and belts it on the near side with all kinds of defensive pressure. So it'll be second down and nine. So look at Michael Vick. I, we, we talked about it in our open. Just the, the rust has got to be dust off this player who uh, has been suspended the first two weeks. And, uh, but he's been practicing with the team for the last couple weeks, too. But 1,001 days since he last played in a meaningful game in the National Football League. And he told us only 80% in terms of his physical condition. It's going to take some while to get back. Trevor Law is on that defensive line right now for Philly. Second down and nine out of the reach of Wade. Boy, there was a lot of pressure, and it came from the middle linebacker, Gaither. He was all over the quarterback, Castle, so it'll be third down and a long nine. Well, it's all about pressure for the Philadelphia Eagles. And if I'm the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm dialing up three-step drops, getting the ball out much quicker because there's going to be a lot of pressure on Castle. The receivers have to get themselves in better position to catch the ball. Look at that. Minus five yards total offense for the Chiefs so far. Hanson becomes the nickel for Philadelphia third down. And a long nine, short ten. Cox back there to help protect. That's caught by Bradley. The leaping grab at the 38. Hit on the play by Sheldon Brown. He's a good one. And a gain of six on third and about ten. They got to punt the ball three and out again for the Kansas City Chiefs. And there you saw it. The three-step drop from Castle. Getting the ball out quick. Able to make the completion. Not enough for the first down. But I think they've got to come out throwing early on the possession. Because they're getting single coverage on the outside from the cornerbacks for Philadelphia. Cole quit to punt once again, and the number one punt returner in the NFL, Deshaun Jackson, is back. Gafford, who had some high snaps in pregame, sends that back to Cole Quitt, who sends it to the 27-yard line. It's first down and 10. The Chiefs just punted for a second consecutive time. 27-yard line, Cobb. Outside for Jackson. Rushed out of bounds by Flowers. On the play, a gain of about 9 to 10 yards, and they're going to spot him at the 37-yard line. Let's see, with Brian Westbrook out of the game, if Vic comes in and they're going to run Wildcat, probably going to be a run play. But in the base offensive package, with Kevin Cobb in, Brian Westbrook out, most likely they're going to throw the football, and I think the Chiefs have to be dialed into that. First and 10, Chiefs in a nickel, McCoy with the block. Nice touch by Jackson. Uh-oh, look out here. He had a 70 plus yard touchdown reception last week. He's inside the 20. He's brought down by the veteran Mike Brown. That's a catch and run of 43 yards and a first down for Philadelphia. And we told you in the open that the Chiefs pass defense was vulnerable over the middle. And this is where Deshaun Jackson decides to work. It's a direct snap over to Kevin Cobb. Then the throw to Deshaun Jackson. He is awesome when it comes to creating yards after the catch. And so they're going to work the middle of the field against this Chiefs defense. Anytime Cobb is in the game and you have the base package, you're going to get the Philadelphia Eagles throwing the ball. Right now, Mike Vick is in. Vick is in. Two down linemen for the Chiefs. First down and 10, 19-yard line. And this is McCoy. Oaks the tackle was upended by Brown. He's about the 10-9 yard line. Picks up 11 yards right there. McCoy has been the star, taking the place, as you mentioned before, of the injured Brian Westbrook. And anytime Vic comes in and they're running what we call the Wildcat offensive system, he's going to hand the ball off. Remember, he hasn't worked much in the base offensive package, so they're going to come in and they're going to hand it off. And we've seen him only throw it once from that Wildcat package. Cobb is back in. Chiefs have gone back now with Tank Tyler at the nose guard, flanked by Jackson and Dorsey. First and goal at the nine. Four in the Kansas City secondary. The block by Max Gene Gillis, seven, the tight end at the two. Hit by Demario Williams, the ex-starter with Atlanta, gain of eight. Nudging closer inside, wow. good throw by Cobb. And Selleck is a little bit groggy. He, he, he's slow to get back to the huddle, and boy, did he take a lick. He pays for this one. Listen up. Williams got him inside. Selleck is one of the top receiving tight ends so far this season in the NFL. So now it's second down and goal at the one. Cobb is in. Beaver has come in as the fullback. McCoy tries to sneak in. Where they push the pile with uh, the center, Jamal Williams. Those two guards in there. Cole along with Max Gene Gillis. Looks to be a bit shy. You see. Belcher, number 59 there, a player they really like, undrafted out of Maine, getting up off the pile. And looks to be a little bit shy as you take a look at Andy Reid. How about that? The Chiefs have yet to stop a team once they've entered the red zone. They've allowed a touchdown on six. Six possessions every single time they've been able to 
score a touchdown the opposition has. And Todd Haley right now has to really be concerned because you give him another touchdown here, it's going to make it really difficult for Matt Castle. Third and goal at the one. Todd tries to take it himself. Did he leap in? And the escort. No sign yet. Touchdown. Second consecutive score by the Philadelphia Eagles. One yard touchdown leap in there by Kevin Cobb. That's his first rushing touchdown. It's just man and muscle down on the goal line. And Cobb is the recipient of the offensive line getting excellent movement up front to get it across the goal line for a touchdown. The big play there was a 43 yard catch and run by the electrifying Deshaun Jackson. And now the extra point. So no McNabb, no Westbrook, no problem. David Akers hold from Rocca. Snap from Dornbos. 14 to nothing Philadelphia. I think the Eagles smell blood. Yeah, and you know the Eagle has landed big time. <laughs> Kevin Cobb here in the first quarter, three for three, 61 yards, throwing the football. Uh, it, the key is, is though with a 14 point lead, it really does take Larry Johnson out of the game. And now they're going to come after your quarterback, Matt Castle. Savage to uh, get it at the one yard line, taking the place. Charles, nice little move right there. Then he was doused at the 20 yard line. Johnson and Cox in the backfield. With Wayne Bode, as we mentioned a couple of times, with the hamstring injury. Larry Johnson. Looking for a block from Goff. He was brought down by Akeem Jordan after a meager gain of a yard to the 21. Second down and nine. And Larry Johnson has no room to run right there. And coming through was Gaither in a loss of four on the play. That's back to the 17-yard line. An aggressive defense will blitz the run. You shoot the gaps, get penetration, and you're on top of the runner before he can hit the line of scrimmage. Exactly what happened from Gaither, the middle linebacker for the Eagles. Clemens, Parker, Abi Amiri. And Darren Howard on the defensive line for Philadelphia. You see the assortment of receivers. Both tight ends are wide. Third and 13. They need the 30. Charles at the side of Kessel. Coming again with the blitz. Hit once by Brown. Hit again by Michael. Gain of two. Hilton Michael with the tackle. Three and out for the Chiefs. They get as far as the 19-yard line. End of one. A five-yard touchdown run by rookie LaShawn McCoy and a one-yard touchdown quarterback keeper by Cobb. 14 zip at the end of one. Chiefs now punting for the third consecutive time. Deep back is Deshaun Jackson. Colquitt lets it fly. Jackson has already had an 85-yard punt return for a touchdown this year. Hang time of 4.4. Here comes Jackson again. Flags all over the place. Elsie High steps it down the far side. This is an exciting kid, a second round pick last year out of Cal. Comes in leading the NFL in yards per punt return. Boy, is he electric when he gets the ball in his hands. There's our referee today. During John the Perry. return, illegal block in the back. Number 53 of the return team, 10 yards, first and 10, Philadelphia, timeout on the field. 18-yard return by Jackson wiped out because of the penalty. Eagles had four special teams penalties against New Orleans last week. Cobb is in there. First down and 10 from the 30. Blocked by Peters. Kevin Cobb. So quick stick right there by Corey Mays, the ex-Patriot from Cincinnati Bengal to the 30-yard line. Gain of a yard. Mays continued to introduce himself to Britt Seller. Another hit on Seller. Chiefs have made a couple substitutions on the defensive line. Gilberry now playing the left defensive end. Ron Edwards, the ex-Buffalo Bill, playing the nose guard. Second down and nine. McCoy at the side of Cobb. LaShawn McCoy. Vrabel closed off the outside there. And then it's Gilberry inside. He knocks down not only the official, but McCoy at the 32 on a gain of a yard. But you see the quickness by the second-round draft pick, LaShawn McCoy. He does give them, I think, another dimension, another element in the backfield. And even without Westbrook today, you know this is a kid that can rack up some huge numbers. 
Had some fumbling issues though. That was a little bit of a concern coming out of college and then the pros are trying to correct that. Yeah I think young running backs who come into this league not used to a lot of guys grasping at the ball from a lot of different angles and it is a learning curve. Third and seven Chiefs in the nickel. You see the assortment of receivers. Tight end Selleck is out there as well. McCoy at the side. There's a block by Peters. It's caught by Selleck. Hit by John McGraw. First down pass to the 48. 14 yard gain on third and seven. Another first down. How about LaShawn McCoy? You talk about him being a good runner and maybe have to protect the football. He was able to pick up the blitzer. Watch in the backfield. Picking up Mike Brown. The safety coming in on the blitz. That allows the quarterback Kevin Cobb. There you see the block. Allows Kevin Cobb to get the ball over to sell it. So we're already seeing the young running back paying off huge without having the ball in his hand. First and ten for Kevin Cobb. Four in the second year. Looking on the far side for Selleck and the coverage on the play by Brandon Carr. Somebody lost a shoe. Second down and ten. Yep, there it is. And it was Mike Brown, or rather it was uh, Brandon Carr. Brandon Carr is the one who lost it. Carr is a second-year player out of Grand Valley State, fifth-round pick. And Carr, who started uh, all of uh, all of last season, they like this kid. Yeah, we say that the Chiefs, they, they've got to make plays on special teams. They've got to make plays on defense. They need to stop. They need to get some turnovers and get good field position for an offense who hasn't been able to move the ball. Second and ten against four in the secondary. Cobb again. Oh, and that was picked off on the play. Just on, no, he uh, let it drop. It was trapped against the ground right on cue. Brandon Carr coming up with what looked like to be an interception. That's an incomplete pass. And but he Brandon, was in the place. Yeah, he's listening up. Yes, <laughs> They've he got to be able to make plays like this. He's got to be able to make the catch. Had an opportunity. See, he's got to catch that ball. And we had one drop last week by Brandon Flowers that could have gone for a touchdown. The Chiefs need big plays on defense in order to not only stay in the game, but to possibly win it. Third down and ten. There is a nickel out there for the Chiefs. Leggett is on the field. Meisel is coming as the nickel linebacker. You see the four spread by Khan. Cole with a nice looking block. Underneath, McCoy makes a miss. Gilbert makes another stop. He'll be close to a first down, but shies to the 44. So it is fourth down and about a yard to go. They're going to go for it. On the line, they have brought in Jackson, who takes the place of Gilbert. The front is now the wing back. Cobb stays in there, fourth and one. Good block by Justice. Knocked down. Nicely on the play. Mike Vrabel was right there. Vrabel had a deflected pass back in preseason against Seattle. That was returned for a touchdown by a defensive back. Vrabel played it well on down. You can see they're wearing JJ on the back of their helmets. But, you know, Andy Reid talked about it. So many of those defensive coordinators have forced offenses to play back on their heels. On first and ten, they go to Brad Cottom, who is out of Tennessee. And he is upended on the play after an 11-yard pickup by Chris Clemens and the ball is to the 45 best position for the Chiefs now they're going to go into the nickel will the Eagles they bring in Parker and some changes on that line Dixon is now on the line the rookie Parker is out there and they've also got Trevor Lawrence second year player out of Notre Dame for Philadelphia first play the Chiefs have been in Eagle territory today is Charles blocked by Waters Jamal Charles out of the University of Texas a flag is down it's a gain of 15. They're down. It's a hold. Holding. Number 76. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay. First down. Chiefs consistently shot themselves last week with penalties just like that. Albert is called there. Yeah, let's take a look at him. And here you see it right there. And a little holding right there. It's just right there. It's, <laughs> it was a little late. I thought the run had already secured his way through the hole. But boy, costly penalties continue to play. The Kansas City Chiefs cost them last week when they had productive positive plays. You can see it taking away another good game there for Todd Haley's offense. Jackie Battle will be out there for Todd Haley in the slot. First and 20. Three penalties on the Chiefs on their offense so far. Javier Murray is back on the defensive line. Johnson with the Waters lead. And a tackle made in the play by Abia Mary. He's been battling a groin. Gain of three to the 48. You know, we were talking about Jim Johnson and, and what he meant to this defense. You mentioned that Todd Haley said that he was the heart of the defense and Brian, Do Brian Dawkins was the soul of the defense. And now Sean McDermott, a young defensive coordinator, trying to pick up the reins. And where they got after the Carolina Panthers week one. We talked about it five sacks five interceptions but didn't fare so well last week against Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints offense. 
Second down and 17. Charles in the backfield. Four in the secondary. Bradley wants to throw it and does. And was it trapped or caught? That's Jamal Charles up against by Dixon. He's hit by Akeem Jordan and takes it all the way down to the 26-yard line. A 27-yard pickup on the throw by Mark Bradley. And watch Bradley. Now the swarming defense is right on top of him. Have to throw it off his back foot, but it is that swarming attacking defense that allows Charles to get so wide open. They clearly left him. And they blow that play dead as they were unraveling. Timeout taken by Philadelphia. Jackie Battle is in the backfield with Cox. And Dupre with the block. That's caught. And the tight end, Ryan, who was coached down in Dallas by Haley at one time in his career, picks it up. And it's a gain of 11 yards on the play, and he's brought down on the wing by Gokong, the linebacker. And better protection that time by the offensive line for Kansas City, giving plenty of time for Castle to find his tight end in man-to-man -man coverage against Gokong. And if you get man-to-man -man coverage, I believe if the protection holds up, Matt Castle have to make some plays throwing the ball. It is first and ten. This is Larry Johnson going around the Ryan block as he swerves for a couple, give him two. He's down to the 12 and a couple defenders got a hand on him in there for the Philadelphia Eagles and quietly Todd Haley's group making some move on this offensive possession had gone three and out on the previous three and was facing third and long on all of those possessions. But now they've got more and greater continuity in terms of their movement. Bradley is in right now. They got two tight ends. Johnson in the backfield second down and eight. And they go to the end zone looking for Bradley. He's got the ball. That's a touchdown as he beats on the side. Ellis Hodges. 13-yard touchdown pass. What a beautiful touch put on that ball by quarterback Matt Castle. And you get man-to-man -man coverage to the outside. It I think poses an excellent opportunity. Throw it up to the back pylon. And watch Bradley go up and come down with the ball over Ellis Hobbs. Just an excellent play between the quarterback and wide receiver. And if you don't go up and fight for the ball, you're not going to come down with it. Bradley was able to do that. So Bradley, whose dad, Danny Bradley, was a former quarterback at Oklahoma, catches the nice pass from Matt Castle, his second touchdown pass this year. Here's the extra point now with Suckup. And with eight and a half minutes to play here in the first half. Matt Castle has faced Ellis Hobbs in New England Patriot practices, so he knew he was just dealing with on the wing there. Both players spent the last four years as teammates in New England, and you got to know that Castle felt like he could take a shot at Ellis Hobbs and get the touchdown, and it paid off. Here's Ellis Hobbs back there. He had a 63-yard return last week. He also fumbled the ball against New Orleans. And suck up. He'll drill it a couple yards deep, and here comes Ellis Hobbs. Buckley with the block on Washington. McGraw was there along with Dewan Morgan making the stop. Nice little return, 32 yards. And there's a flag on the field. The offsides on the kickoff. Let's see. Offside on the kicking team. Number 25. That penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. First and 10. Chiefs have the nickel out there. Peters with the block at the left tackle. That's caught by Deshaun Jackson. And there he goes. In for six. Wow. This kid is one of the best in the NFL already in just his second year. A 64-yard touchdown pass. He caught one last week for 71 yards against New Orleans. They say speed kills. And after you missed the initial tackle, Gerard Page, the last standing free safety, doesn't stand a chance against the speed and quickness of Deshaun Jackson. And he is quick. Here is Akers to put up another try. So on a day that was focused on the return of Michael Vick, it's been others who have taken the spotlight. The Zankers will get it teed up. And Antrell Savage is deep back for the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, expecting another rain shower here in Philadelphia. We had rain last night. It was misting this morning. The sun broke out. Now we've got clouds over 
beautiful stadium here in downtown Philly from the 11 yard line with a block from battle. And run outside. And Jordan right there. Keen Jordan is all over the field. He starts as a linebacker, makes a special teams tackle right there. 17 yard return. Three step drop. It's in the slant right here, coming here. And watch, Page is the last guy, not going to be able to make the tackle. And so anytime you just run that slant route, see quick stab, three step, and then one guy to beat. With that much speed and that much space to work with, those are the concerns and problems that really Todd Haley had talked to us about last night. He said they create some spatial problems. His fourth 100-yard game. And just one quick touch, and he's in the end zone. Four defensive backs. It's first and ten for the Chiefs. Larry Johnson is in the slot as a receiver atop your screen. Matt Castle with your touchdown pass. Last time out there with Ryan, and he's hit by... Quentin Michael into the 29 yard line. He picks up two yards on the play. Yeah, you got to be patient if you are the Kansas City Chiefs. Be patient. Continue to attack the defense. I think whenever the protection is held up for Castle, he's been able to find some receivers on the back end, particularly when he's getting man to man coverage out on the perimeter of the defense. Bradley, Charles, Ingram. Ryan is in motion. Top of the screen wave. All those receivers out there. Second down and eight. They got the nickel. And Hanson has come back in the sec secondary. And there is a flag. Ball start. Number 54. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's on Brian Waters who had some interesting words for Todd Haley at uh, practice on Friday in Kansas City. Yeah, Todd Haley was going to let him take the pads off the of practice for the first time. And, and Brian Waters said, hey, no, we, we need to keep them on. Said, hey, we've been playing well. They feel like as a team they were getting really close. So the veteran said, I couldn't believe I was saying it, but he wanted to keep the pads on for that Friday practice. Patterson and Bunkley are the two defensive tackles. Parker, along with Cole, the defensive end, second down and 13. They need the 37. Charles at the side of Kessel. Albert tries to throw a block. And there's Copper on the near side. The tackle made by Macho Harris. He was a rookie from Virginia Tech. The game to the 31-yard line. He picks up six on the play. Good tackle by Macho Harris coming up from the secondary. Watch him come up, and he's unblocked. Got to be able to get him on the ground. <laughs> Tackling was a huge problem last week it against was, the New yeah. Orleans Saints, but they gave up over 400 yards total offense to the Saints. Third and six. Charles at the side of Castle. Into the nickel. Blocked by Ryan. Pressure up the middle. Incomplete. Boy, they were bringing everybody right there. There is a flag thrown. They had Parker coming up the middle and Macho Harris and another linebacker was in there. Tracy White, the ex-Green Bay Packer, and the flag at 635 here of the second. Holding number 64. That penalty's been declined. Results of the play. Fourth down. Nyswanger picked up a penalty last week against the Raiders. Three and out for the Chiefs. Pressure up the middle and off the corners. The pocket just disintegrates right in front of Matt Castle. Forced to throw the ball, throwing off his back foot well before he wanted to. Jeremy Macklin will be deep back for this cold quit punt. His dad, Greg Colquitt, of course, Pennsylvania's, Pennsylvanians know that. With uh, him punting with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Macklin is back at about the 16-yard line. And head over heels. Studebaker was down there. The ex-Eagle uh, training camp invitee along with Battle. It's an eight-yard return after a 53-yard punt. And there's a flag down at the 33 at the other end of the field. Boy, John Perry has had a workout. His dad was an NFL official during the 80s and worked two of the most uh, memorable playoff games in NFL history. That fog bowl between the Bears and Eagles. You may recall that in the Chargers-Bengals ice bowl back when it was 59 degrees below zero. By the way, we have Art McNally, who is in the building, too, here, the one-time uh, supervisor of NFL officials. John Perry is a rising star, but uh, it's in his bloodlines. His dad was a good one, too, back in the 80s for the league. We talk about uh, good bloodlines. This guy's got some pretty good bloodlines himself. His dad, Dick Haley, is a longtime scout for the Pittsburgh Steelers and drafted a lot of Hall of Famers. Todd Haley and just had cold quit punt. Offside, number 34 of the receiving team. Kansas City is elected. Five yard penalty and a re kick, replay, fourth down. Look at that. And, and, and you're talking about some guys who have grown up around football and thriving at this level. Go quit again. Macklin is back, waving for the fair catch and fair caught at the 25. But certainly you have to have some patience. He told us it's a process. 
but he feels like he's getting close. Well, you look at this score today, that you knew the Eagles were going to come out and try to go right at this football team, and boy, have they. Belcher is an inside linebacker taking the place of the, uh, Corey Mays, and here is the handoff on first and ten with the nice defensive play by the aforementioned Belcher. It's on McCoy. It's a gain of a yard. McCoy has had a nice game already in this uh, contest. He's got a touchdown run. Here comes Vic. There was a gain of one to the 26. And I stand corrected. I said the Eagles had scored touchdowns on their last three possessions. It's, it sure seems like it, but yeah. they, they have scored on three of their last five possessions. And we're going to get a chance to see Mike Vick run the Wildcat system right now. Edwards playing the nose tackle for Kansas City. You see the allotment of receivers. Mike Vick is in second down and nine. McCoy at his side. Westbrook not playing today because of a bad ankle. Oh, nice play by Holly. Incomplete looking for a bunt. Tomba Holly just shut that play down. I think Vic wanted to roll a little bit. And he told us that he was just excited and elated to get back on the field today and said he didn't want to do anything to screw up the limited opportunities he would have in this game today. Cobb is back in third and nine. Nickel secondary for the Chiefs. Next team goes with the block shot again. Hit by Holly. That's a first down. Catch and run to the 40 yard line. Picks up 13 on third and nine. He's got five receptions, does this terrific-looking tight end, Selleck. Yeah, Selleck is really good, but, boy, Kevin Cobb has done a good job to find his tight end, and you heard the lick delivered by Tom Bahali. We Selleck has taken several of those shots. Every time we roll in, a play where a hard lick is laid on the Philadelphia Eagle player has been Brett Selleck on the other end of it. Tank Tyler back in now at the nose guard for the Chiefs. It is first and ten from the 39. Cobb is in. Weaver's back there with McCoy. Into a four-man secondary. Side it goes, and this is caught by Reggie Brown, who's tackled by Mike Vrabel. It's a gain of four on the play. Uh, Reggie Brown playing for the first time this season. He's been inactive the last two games for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, and he needs to be productive. And here's a guy that has really descended down the depth chart with so many of the young receivers playing very well. We talked about Deshaun Jackson. You could see the fifth year player Reggie Brown was once highly thought of in the rotation of receivers here in Philadelphia. But Matt. Jeremy Macklin and other guys have taken that spot. Macklin at the top of your screen on second down and six. Here is McCoy. Looked like Grable got another hand on him as well up to about the 44 on a gain of two. Well, McCoy has chipped in rather nicely. He already showed you some of the runs. Already have a touchdown run in this game, but really good in pass protection as well. And I think if he's going to be the guy to replace Westbrook, he really is going to have to step up that part of his game. Sometimes, you know, Solomon, you wonder if, if doing all this trickery, all this wildcat stuff pulls away from the basics of this Philadelphia offense. But Andy Reid said it. Hey, not only is it fun, it allows them to really put the defense back on their heels. He said, we have to start dictating to the defense as opposed to them dictating to us. Chiefs in the nickel. Donald Washington is the fifth defensive back. Third down long, four blocked by Peters. And here comes Rayvon. and down he goes. Sack. And a flag is thrown back in the secondary. Sack at the 40. It's a loss right now on the play of about two yards. We'll see what this flag is all about as we take a look at the multiple pro bowler, Mike Vrabel. And Vrabel is hot and upset that this sack is going to be null and void because of the penalty. Mike Vrabel, who played at Ohio State, traded with Castle in the offseason from New England. Personal foul, face mask, number 20 of huh? the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. First and 10, mm. Kansas City. That's a rookie, Donald Washington, out of Ohio State. Well, we've seen penalties last week on the defense that really negated some positive plays that they were making and ultimately I think some of those penalties cost them the game last week against the Raiders and here it wipes away a magnificent play made by Mike Vrabel. Vic is in. Chiefs go back to four in the secondary and Belcher continues to take the place of Corey Mays at that inside backer position. It is first and ten. Weaver's a wing back and you see the assortment of receivers. Macklin in motion. Macklin gets the call. Great block by Weaver the fullback and then outside they had Belcher and Page who knocked that play back for a yard loss. Back a, to the 41-yard line. A direct snap to Mike Vick, and they hand it over to Macklin on the sweep. This is just another one of those plays you get out of the Wildcat, and it's well defended. Containing the football is Jarrett Page, not allowing the ball to get to the outside. And so as you can see what they've done in the base offense, 23 plays over 200 yards and eight Wildcat plays for only 23 yards. Second down and 10. Starters on there on the defensive line for the Chiefs. 
No changes in the secondary, second and ten. Cobb back in. McCoy and Weaver in the backfield. Selleck, sixth reception. Oh, did he get it? He was dragging Demario Williams. Wow. He's shy by about a yard. He's to the 31. <laughs> he picks up nine. This kid is terrific to watch. He came in to today tied as the number one receiving tight end with Chris Cooley. I think when you're a young quarterback, the tight end gives you easy completions because you're working the middle of the field. And he has continued to find Brett Selleck for those easy completions, has Kevin Cobb. Well, on this drive alone, he's caught passes for 13 right there and nine before. And look at the work put in by Brett Selleck fighting to get to that first down marker. But if you're a young quarterback, you got to learn to check it down to the running backs or use the tight ends over the middle of the field. All right, McCoy now will get the direct snap. Quarterback atop your screen. Brown in motion. She thread it well. Belcher, boy, they love this kid. Down to the 29-yard uh, line and a pickup of three. Belcher just slammed the door shut. There was a hole there, but he stepped up in it and really turned back LaShawn McCoy, who thought he was going to get positive yards. Two-minute warning. In Philadelphia, the home of Donovan McNabb, not playing today. He hasn't made a 16-game season full through in five years for this team. He's always injured. But he's always been able to overcome and, and help this team down the stretch. Cobb got it, second down and five. Sets up the screen. This is the fullback, Weaver. Williams has a beat on him. Demario Williams makes the tackle at the 15-yard line. Picks up nine. That's another first down for the Eagles. They got another quarterback active today, too. That's the ex-Eagle, now the current Eagle, Jeff Garcia. Andy Reid said, hey, he's doing me a favor. Week two, and Mike Vick still under suspension, and Donovan McNabb out with that rib injury. Only Kevin Cobb was eligible to play. He said, hey, I, I needed another guy. I needed another quarterback for week two. He said, Jeff Garcia's doing me a favor, but now you look around, you got Garcia, you got Vick, and you got McNabb and Cobb. Three of the four have been to Pro Bowls. Washington has come in as the nickel. It is a first and ten. Cobb with McCoy at his side. Good block by Jackson the center. 11 yard line, that's a catch. The hit was on Avant by Flowers. Mark him at the 11 yard line with a gain of about four. What did Andy Reid tell us? He said, I look around and, and practice. I see all these quarterbacks. He said, I think I'm in Honolulu. <laughs> well, 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 let me He's ask really you pleased with his quarterback. That's a lot of active guys. A lot of guys, they take valuable roster spots. It might affect depth in other areas. Yeah, but they have injuries in those areas. And then you have another quarterback in Michael Vick who's not quite ready to handle the entire package that this offense gives you. Still the nickel. Second down and six. Peters with a good-looking block at the left tackle. Incomplete. Jackson was guarded by Flowers. They had Macklin, who was picked up by a linebacker, Williams. It'll be third and six. Boy, Macklin was some kind of player at Missouri. Yeah, and he took a shot from Mike Brown right to the back. He's going to wobble off. Cobb fires this one just behind him, and there you see that lick right to the upper back. From Mike Brown. And off to the left they had, who you didn't see in that picture right there, was Jackson coming in the back of the end zone underneath the crossbar. And there is Macklin. He's he act, taking the place of Kevin Curtis, who's injured today. He actually had Macklin open. He just yeah, threw right. it behind him. So he threw it to the open receiver. He just had to be more accurate on the pass. Chiefs in the nickel. McCoy, the running back, atop your screen, third down and six. Jackson with another good block in the middle. It's crossed in the board. Nice coverage by the Chiefs. They were going for a punt. And they had Corey Mays. The two inside linebackers were there. Along with Demario Williams. So the Chiefs hold him out. Looks like, yep, they're going to relegate the Eagles to a three point try. Better throw from Kevin Cobb. Avant not able to make the catch. Hit him right in the hands. Maybe it was his own teammate glancing right in front of him and didn't allow clear vision on the ball, but certainly one that he should have caught. So here is David Akers, and he'll try this field goal. He's three of four this year. All time leader in Philadelphia scoring, 23 yard try. Hold on, we'll take that back. 29-yard try. Three more on the board for Philadelphia. At halftime, I think Todd Haley got to get his group together, particularly on offense. They've got to be more aggressive. I think taking shots and throwing the ball on first and second down. They're getting a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. We already saw Mark Bradley make a play in man-to-man -man coverage against Ellis Hobbs. I think there are more plays like that to be had on offense for Kansas City. Dentrell Savage is deep back on the kickoff by Akers. Now battle ahead. Here comes Savage from the five-yard line for Kansas City. Buckley finally gets him. Got him around the ankle and brings him down after a 22-yard return. Buckley has been on practice squads last couple years. 
And we said that Matt Castle's got to take more shots down the field when he gets man to man coverage. The problem is the protection hasn't held up with the offensive line. When you get man to man coverage from this Philadelphia Eagles defense, that means they are blitzing and they're coming after Castle. So three step drop for Todd Haley's offense has to be the plays they'll dial up on this final possession and especially going into the second half. First and ten, Nichols secondary, Charles in the backfield and gets the call. Goff had a block, and there goes the slippery Charles up to the 36-yard line. Is it on the play by Darren Howard, who played at Kansas State? That is a gain of nine. After the Chiefs timeout, second down and one yard to go. Engram is on the move. And set up the screen down and bat it down. Looked like Howard came through, but he also had some help from Jose Leo Hansen and Trent Cole. They were all right in the grill of the quarterback for the Chiefs, Matt Castle. Oh, they're blitzing him on just about every down. They <laughs> overload they that right side, and you had two guys who came free right in the face of Castle by the time he got the football. McDermott, and you mentioned this earlier in the broadcast, they say he did not blitz enough last week against New Orleans. Yeah, that meant that you knew they were going to blitz <laughs> a, a lot today against Kansas City. Into the nickel, third down and one. Jamal Charles at the side of Castle. No bow today because of the hamstring issue. Albert with a nice block. Oh, here they come. Cole has it. Howard has it. And Clemens in there dousing him and a little talk there with Castle and Howard. He said, I'm going to be here all day, my friend. Third sack today given up by the offensive line. It's a loss of nine. Back to the 26-yard line. They're just overmatched up yep. front on the offensive line. There's no doubt. They're just closing in. And watch them pinch the pocket coming in from both sides. There's nowhere for Castle to go. Now you can see pressure up the middle, pressure from the backside and the front side. All he can do is just make sure that he doesn't fumble the football. We talked about it. Three-step drop. Got to get the ball out. Getting man-to-man -man coverage. In order to take advantage of that, the protection has to hold up. So they're done for the first half, and Cole Quitt will punt. This is the fifth punt in six Kansas City possessions this afternoon. Macklin is back for the Eagles. Twenty yard line. Here comes Gafford. Here comes Jackie Battle. Hang time of 4.7 on the play. Here's a look at Michael Vick. Ironically enough, the last time that he played was back in New Year's Eve here with Atlanta back in 2006. As you see the snaps taken in that Wildcat this afternoon so far. Ten plays out of the Wildcat formation, averaging 3.1 yards per play. Compared to last week when they ran it 12 times, they averaged 5.7 per play. And so you could see just a little bit off in terms of the overall production from last week. How ironic for Vic. He was in prison just 35 miles away from Kansas City, and his first game back is against the Chiefs. Here we go, starting the second half. Dantrell Savage will take it out. Not four yards deep. They were. Really good. Andy Reid dialing up plays and putting up points on, on the scoreboard. It's a first and ten handoff to Larry Johnson. You see Bunkley in there making the stop and no gain on the play. It'll be second down and ten at the 25-yard line. Larry Johnson, he's lost weight. This whole team for Kansas City has dropped a lot of weight. Yeah, they, they lost weight wanting to be a more fit football team one with greater endurance late in the in games in the fourth quarter Todd Haley said yeah over 800 pound loss with this football team but now they got to pay off and come away with a win it's second and ten two tight ends Larry Johnson Drop down on the play and no gain on it and they had Trent Cole and if you're going to pick maybe a signature player with this team Cole might be that player well, on the defensive side. Yeah and it starts with pressure. He's a guy that has been relentless in terms of his consistency in getting at the quarterback. Darren Howard's been good today and they've also gotten good pressure inside from their defensive line who also been getting in the face of Matt Castle. Third down and ten Charles at the side of Castle. Celio Hansen is the fifth defensive back for the Eagles. And Charles and Duke lost back, as did the wide receiver Ingram, and brought down on the play by Macho Harris. A flag is down, gain of Holding. 12. Number 60, 10-yard penalty 
replay, third down. No wonder in Duke, I called him out. No wonder in yeah. Duke we had the good block. He was holding on the play. He was acquired uh, in the middle of preseason from the Miami Dolphins and became an instant starter. It's become a common occurrence right now with this football team. And there it is right there, 60 red. In Dukeway, there's the hole, and that's what allows Charles to get to the corner. And so, if you're going to hold him, <laughs> you can get him to the second level in terms of running the football, but they will bring it back. Cole and Parker are the defensive ends. Howard and Robbie Amiri are the defensive tackles, third and 20. They need the 36. Charles pulling the block is Nyswanger and Waters, and Cole is there again. And to the 22 yard line, the Chiefs on that gain of seven. Will be well shy of the first down. Three and out for Kansas City. Seven possessions, upcoming the sixth punt. Very conservative play on third down by Todd Haley. Maybe looking to save his quarterback. Once you get into those known situations where the defense know you have to throw the football, they're going to bring everyone to hit your quarterback. Maybe deciding he wants to save Matt Castle from taking a beat. Cole quick to punt, and Deshaun Jackson is back for the Philadelphia Eagles. Long time of about 4 8. You can see it rolling down to the 30 yard line, and Belcher will down it right there. Chiefs told us last night they spent about 30% of their practice this week preparing for the Wildcats. Yeah, and last time preparing for Kevin Cobb in the base offense, which is where they've done most of their damage. Starters in there for the Chiefs. Cobb under center, first and 10. Fake to McCoy. The block by seven. It's Deshaun Jackson. Hit on the play by Demario Williams. He's up to the 47-yard line. Nice pickup of 17 yards. And tremendous protection provided by Kevin Cobb. And boy, does he do a good job of just standing in the pocket. Now watch a comfortable pocket, a window to not only step up and deliver the ball through, but boy, they keep him clean. And Jackson's real good going over the middle. We told you at the top, there's some holes on the back end in that secondary right over the middle of the field. And that's exactly where the Eagles were going to work. And that's what they're doing right now. Vic is in. Cobb is out first and ten. McCoy at the side of Vic. McCoy. Taken out of bounds by Demario Williams. He works his way for five to the 48-yard line of the Chiefs. Cobb is in. Second down and five. That's caught. Macklin right in front of Carr. Near page. 11-yard pickup. Leave to the 37-yard line. This kid is good. He, he can make all the throws. I've been really impressed with what I've seen from Kevin Cobb. You can see Macklin working the sideline. This ball zips right in there on the money. Coverage over the top and coverage underneath. He slams this one into a real short window. And you see the velocity and accuracy on that throw. We were impressed on Friday. There was a nice little strong wind. We saw him complete one down the field, throwing into the wind, Kevin. Stacey Andrews playing the right guard right now. First and 10 from the 37. Cobb is in. McCoy at his son. Peters the block. That's caught Macklin stiff arming his way into Carr. First down, pickup of 11 to the 26 to G. They spent a lot of money on Nick Clemens as a free agent from Buffalo a couple years ago. It paid off on that play. Well, the defense as a whole was paying off for San Francisco right now. First and ten. McCoy the direct snap. Blocked by Stacey Andrews. And belted on the play. Looks like Tank Tyler also was hit by Mays. It's a gain of four and uh, down to the 22-yard line. Now we talked to Andy Reid about this Wildcat system. He says, you know, we have to figure out how to make them play us instead of us playing them. You know, dictating to the offense. He said the defenses over the last few years have done a good job of that. Dictating to the offense. All the exotic zone blitzes. Forcing the offense to say, hey, what's going on here? We saw Rex Ryan do that to the Patriots last week in their upset win. And I think what Handy Reid wants to do is take that back. He wants to be more progressive, more offensive in nature and force the defense to have to react to him. Well, the media has been on this story here in Philadelphia all week, but like they, they've done so well on offense, top three finishes the last statistically the last three consecutive years. And why are you messing with something that is working so well? That's the question. They're, well, they're because in, out the at in the National Football League, you have to always continue to evolve. You have to always continue to grow. Andy Reid is not afraid to tinker and try new things. And I think with the collection of talent he has here on offense, and even with the addition of Mike Vick, I think this team is tailor-made to some of the creative things that Andy Reid wants to do on the offensive side of the ball. Speaking of Vick, he's in right now, second down and six. Coy at his side. Edwards now playing the nose guard for the Chiefs. McCoy, blocked by Andrews, got by Vrabel, got by Washington. 
Mainly Beck pedals his way to about the 20 and picks up two yards on the play. Well, they got a bye next week. Would they be playing this exotic looking offense? And I guess you'd call the Wildcat in terms of that exotic. Would they play this like against a Dallas or a New York Giant? Would they experiment like this with teams like that? I think when you come in playing against a team like Kansas City, a team that has lost 25 of their last 27 regular season games, I think that plays a role in it. I think the fact that Donovan McNabb is out and so now you have your backup quarterback in and you feel that you can do some things maybe a little bit differently and then you have Westbrook out of the game as well so I think all of those things play a role in their ability to run the Wildcat a little bit more this week. They're in the nickel Cobb and looking for Jackson covered by the rookie out of Ohio State that fifth defensive back the fourth round pick Donald Washington. So they got to settle for three again. The Chiefs force them to try for three. Well, at least they're taking some shots. And Cobb has been really good at getting the ball to his offensive weapons. And this is not a bad throw. You don't underthrow that and allow it to be intercepted. You throw it where either your guy could get it or no one's going to get it. How about Macklin on that drive? Caught two passes with 11 yards apiece, a 17 yard pass to Jackson. This is a 38 yard field goal try by Akers. Going boss with the long snap. And uh, let's see, yep, got it. Field goal moments ago at 38 yards with some of the numbers attached not only to Cobb but some other guys around the league today. Bradshaw for the Giants, a big game. Here's Jones Drew trying to pound some things out for Jacksonville. Deshaun Jackson, 134. Well, if you're a fantasy player, these are some nice numbers to look at as we see the kickoff from Akers and deep back will be Dan Trell Savage as he has been all day long. Nice kickoff by Akers and going to leave it there in the end zone. Cobb last week against New Orleans threw for just under 400 yards in his first career start. And eliminated the three interceptions from one week ago. He told us, he said, hey, I'm still going to come out and play aggressive. I just have to be smarter in terms of what I'm doing in each situation. I think he's continued to be aggressive in the game today. And now it's Matt Castle's turn. He threw two picks one week ago. Done a better job of protecting the ball, even though he hasn't had much time to find the open receiver. Defensive tackles Dixon and Long. First and ten with two tight ends. Aaron Johnson. Not a lot there. Looked like uh, Akeem Jordan, the linebacker, makes the stop after a yard. And looking for their first winner, the Titans. Yeah, and those old Houston Oiler uniforms. That's a throwback big time. Second down and nine. Cox in the backfield, the fullback, and trying to offer a block for Larry Johnson. He puts a nice one on Mike. And he was tripped up on the play by Jordan and hit on the play as well by Dixon, rambling in off that defensive line. Gain of 11 for Larry Johnson to the 32. Nice gain and positive yards going off tackle to the right side. They said they want to make Larry Johnson run toward the sideline, east-west. He gets his shoulders turned upfield, and boy, can he be a low. It's a really good gain, and no penalties on the play, so real positive right now for Kansas City. They've been accustomed to get a penalty on the first play of the possession, putting them in a hole. First and 10, two tight ends in, and wait at the bottom of your screen. Johnson got the block from Goff on first and 10, brought down by uh, Macho Harris after a gain of five. I just mentioned away, they've only thrown his way once. He's not caught a pass, and he was such a big factor in the offense so we could go against the Absolutely. Raiders. Absolutely, and I think you have to be able to find production from the wide receivers. I haven't seen anything that the Eagles are doing really to try to take them away. No double coverage on Bobby mm -hmm. Wade. And, you know, Dwayne Bow in his absence, Bradley made a play in the first half, but, you know, I think it's really disappointing for the Chiefs to not have Dwayne Bow. Ready for this ball game. Abdi Amiri and Howard are the two defensive ends. Second down and five. Cox, the fullback, is in. Here comes the rest by Abdi Amiri. So the one of those tight ends, and that was Sean Wright. Brought down by the middle linebacker, Omar Heath. There's a gain of four. Close to the first down at the 40 yard line. They Boy. wanted Stuart Bradley in there, but he blew an E in the preseason. Yeah, how about the poise, though, from Matt Castle? Because mm -hmm. the pressure was in his face right away, and he just stood there. He was going to take it. Delivered a very accurate pass to Ryan for a positive game. By the way, Jake O'Donnell, O'Connell rather, for the Chiefs, inactive today after being a factor in the offense, or at least a main part of their offense. So we could go against the Raiders. Third down and one. Savage at the side of the quarterback Castle. Hansen is the fifth defensive back. Quarterback keeper. And he's grabbed by Bunkley. What a nice move by Broderick Bunkley. A loss of a yard back to the 40 yard line. This is a former first round pick, was Bunkley, number 97 out of Florida State. 
And the Chiefs have got to punt the ball. This is a designed play, just a quarterback draw. See, he fakes it, he holds it, and they try to use the running back Savage as a lead blocker, but Bunkley dissected it. He didn't run up the field. He stayed in his rush lane, made the tackle on Matt Castle to get off the field on third down. Fourth consecutive punt coming up for the Chiefs. 0 of 7 on third downs today. It's a fake. It is a fake, and it goes off to McGraw, who gets the first down to the 44 yard line picks up three on the play and the Chiefs will keep it alive and continue their drive. McGraw had a block punt week one against Baltimore for a TD. Well watch this one. He just takes it right off that left side and boy, they were able to trip him up but not before he picks up a new set of downs. How about Todd Haley getting a little bit more aggressive. Don't want to give the ball back to this Eagles offense. that has been so good at taking advantage of every opportunity. First down and ten. The tight ends. That doesn't stop the defensive penetration. Go Kong was there, and the King Jordan was there. Lots of everyone. Runs. Larry Johnson is thrown back to the 42. You're right. Everyone was there. <laughs> Quentin Michael also in. Boy, they brought everyone. Did Sean McDermott, the defensive coordinator for the Eagles? We talk about blitzing the quarterback. Sometimes you got to be able to blitz the run too. Get penetration in that backfield. Go blow up the play. Cole's back in is one of the. Defensive lineman, as is Abi Amiri, starting defensive tackles in there. Second down 11. Again, the two tights. Larry Johnson brought with the lead block, and that's a fumble on the play and recovered by Michael at the 47. Burton Michael has just recovered a Larry Johnson fumble. Welcome back, and boy, I'm telling you, this one is a tough call because I don't know if we have enough evidence to be able to overturn it. But watch number 57, Chris Gokong. That's who you want to watch. Watch him get a left hand in there. That's where the ball comes out. But was Larry Johnson's knee on the ground before the ball was dislodged? I think it's very difficult to tell. Let's take another look at it. There's the strip. He's down. Ball out. It was almost like a bang, bang. But you don't know if that ball was <clears throat> sort of dislodged prior to that thigh hitting the ground. Well, while we were away, we had the challenge flag thrown by Todd Haley, and so that's what our referee, John Perry, is taking a look at right now. We are in uh, Philadelphia, where, you know, they, they talk about, the, as we take a look, and they continue to see if it was a fumble by Larry Johnson. This is a very historic city outside of just American history. The, the NFL, in that name alone, actually began here in 1902, the Phillies baseball team and the Philadelphia Athletics baseball team joined the Pittsburgh baseball team and rounding up players with a three man three team league called the National After Football the League. Play, the play stands as called. Yeah. First and ten, Philadelphia, Kansas City is charged with their first team timeout. And I think that was the right call. And so the Chiefs lose the penalty or lose the challenge and lose the timeout as well. Didn't think we saw anything that would allow the officials to overturn the call down on the field. But I could see from Todd Haley's perspective on that side of the field, I think he probably had a better view of it than we did with our cameras. Gilberry is now in there for Dorsey from the 47 yard line. This is LaShawn McCoy. First down and 10. Looked like Tank Tyler was over there with the stop. He was on a gain of three to about midfield that league I was talking about the original National Football League with those three baseball teams throwing players into form three teams folded in 1903 just a year later the Eagles began in 1933 and I, the reason I bring this up is the Chiefs are celebrating their 50th anniversary from the old AFL that began as the Dallas Texans moved to Kansas City where they have been since the early 60s second down and seven and this is McCoy in the direct snap Getting a block from Max Gene Gillis and tackled as he works his way up the middle and hit by Tank Tyler on a gain of four. And uh, Solomon, they take him to the 46 yard line of the Chiefs. Yeah, and, and mistakes continue to cost the Kansas City Chiefs just when you think they really got it going. You know, and Todd Haley, he doesn't suffer mistakes very well. And he talked about it the number of penalties, the number of missed opportunities last week. And now, as the offense appeared to be on the move and the fumble by Larry Johnson just really takes a lot of the wind out of their set. Dorsey along with Tank Turner will be the defensive one. Nickel secondary with Washington. Third down and three. Cobb is back in at that quarterback slot. Complete with Macklin turning outside. Coverage on the play by 
Donald Washington sailed to the near side. It's three and out. Cobb's got to be a little disappointed at that time because he had his receiver open. And I think Washington was beat on the play and had the receiver just didn't put it didn't put it on him. You see Marty Morton said what happened. He called the play and it was there to be had. Bobby Wade is back inside the 10 for the Kansas City Chiefs and Sam Rocker the former Australian rules football league player will put it away. Knuckleball Wade. Fair cut, 15 yard line. Three and out in the fumble this half for the Kansas City Chiefs. They begin here after the rocket punt down to the 15 yard line where it is first down and 10. I have a feeling the Chiefs kind of like to model themselves after this Philadelphia ball club, the way they have built through the draft and rookie free agents. And they've got a lot of work to do because yeah, you're right, the Eagles have done a good job of building this organization under over the last 10 years. First and ten, the pitch out to Larry Johnson. Let's get across the green. Got by Michael, and he's hit by Omar Gaither. About the 29-yard line, he picks up 14 on the play. And in 11-yard carry the last time. What a draft class they had this year with Jeremy Macklin and LaShawn McCoy, both starting today. First down and ten. Take to LJ, and here comes Mark Bradley with the lead block by Cox and a block across the way by Copper. He's down to the 48 yard line and falls down. Michael is over there making the stop. A 23 yard run by the Chiefs. Very impressive play. Wide receiver reverse. It comes around Bradley and then excellent blocking over the top. You can see Bobby Wade getting in a really nice block. Copper getting in a good block. And so no penalties down on the play. And play will stand. But they haven't had enough of these kind of plays. Especially here today. Bradley caught a 13 yard touchdown pass earlier in the game. That was good for 23. First and 10 with a Cox lead block. This is Larry Johnson. We bear hug him as he gets to about the 46. Gaither was there with the stop. Also, Trent Cole. It's a gain of two. Well, you know the coaching is taking place. And we spent a lot of time with Scott Pioli, the general manager for the Kansas City Chiefs, the head coach, Todd Haley, and all the things that they're teaching. It, it's going to take some time in Kansas City. We've seen teams over the last few years turn it around rather quickly. Well, How about Miami, Miami, Miami going from 1 and 15, 11 and 5, but the cover was really bare upon their arrival. Two tight ends, second and a long seven. Outside for Wade, his first catch today. Flag is thrown. Cole with the stop. 40 yard line is the gain and a pickup of five. Wade caught six last week against Oakland and was a big factor. As the flag will be discussed across the way. A little more history in Philadelphia. This is also the beginning of the NFL office. Pass interference, number 89 on the offense. 10 yard penalty, replay. Second down. Sean Ryan picks that up. He's been with the Cowboys and uh, some other teams, but Burt Bell was the first recognized commissioner of the league. Here 89 right there. There it is. I <laughs> see they're saying that they were blocking while the ball was in the air. You can't do that. I think that's splitting hairs. It was really close, but the ball had yet to be caught by Bradley. Second and 17. Eight penalties on the Chiefs, six on their offense. Charles at the side of Castle. Struck by the tight end Ryan. And then uh, taken down by Jordan. Gain of three up to the 48. Oh, he was one man away from breaking that one. And that's where the plays have to come from. Castle doing a better job getting the ball out. They're dialing up pass plays that allows him a three step drop and where he doesn't have to hold on to the ball too long. But you can see over the last couple of weeks their third down conversions. They've digressed 0 for 7 today. Cox and Charles at the side of Castle, third down and 14, they need the 38. To Charles. Scoring free, and then uh, Abiyamira along with others. Make the stop look like Gaither was there too. Gain of four with the 49. Well, there's so much penetration by the defenders for Philadelphia. McDermott is just filling in every gap with a defender, not allowing anyone to get to the second level of the defense. Charles had to fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Belcher is in for Corey Mays at the inside backer. Gilbury's playing the defensive end for Jackson. Second down and ten. This is the fullback, Weaver. Third and five. 
Cobb is in there. The nickel secondary. Good block by Peters. And that is caught with Carr all over Deshaun Jackson. He's got the first down. It's up to the 33-yard line and picks up nine on the play. How about JV talking about the once upon a time speed? Yeah. <laughs> it, it once was, but how about the speed of Deshaun Jackson? And they know how to get him the ball. And this time, the Kansas City Chiefs do a better job of corralling him. You got to tackle him and get on top of him from the time he makes the catch. But how about the little guy? You know, he was just a 14-year-old. He would go to River Falls, Wisconsin, and actually practice with this team. He had an older brother, Byron Jackson, who actually played for the Chiefs. Vic on first and ten. McCoy. Redwell brought down. Leggett makes the stop after a gain of three to the 35. Hey, everybody talking about Mark Sanchez, the rookie out of USC. Hey, Mark Sanchez is for real a rising star in the Big Apple. Boy, he will be the toast of the town if he keeps this up. Jackson back in there for Gilberry at the left defensive end for the Chiefs. Second down and seven. Cobb was under center. His check down takes him to Jackson at the 42. He's hit by Vrabel, and he picks up six on the play. Shy of a first down by about a yard. But quietly on the move. Cobb getting better, settling down. Starting to find his receivers over the middle, and you know, he comes off right now. They're going to go with a direct snap. Vic coming into the game, but yeah, this Eagles offense flawless. Zero penalties, zero sacks allowed, and zero turnover. Something you know, Andy Reid would love to keep it that way. So Vic is in. Chiefs will line up with Mike Brown on that defensive line. He's the safety. They're going to put him down low. Four in the secondary. Third down and one. Vic is under center. McCoy, no stopper. Demario Williams was there. There was no gain. He got as far as the 42-yard line, and they did not get the first down. So it'll be fourth, and they will punt. Yeah, no trickery there. Just a regular ISO play up the middle with a fullback leading. And how about that? Kansas City Chiefs still putting up a fight. Refuse to concede, understanding they get the stop. They will get the ball back for their offense. Walker will punt, and deep back is Bobby Wade. He was the leading receiver for the Vikings last couple of years. He was cut at the end of camp. Signed 10 days ago by the Chiefs. Rocker gets it away. Wade from the 20-yard line. And slippery as he is, he got by Clemens, and a flag is down. And hit on the play. Well, Clemens kind of knocked him, I guess, off stride, didn't he? And 18-yard uh, return, 38-yard punt, hangs on a 3-5-9. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 39 of the return team. 10-yard penalty, <laughs> first and 10. Timeout. Well, I thought it was a good call. Dixon is playing one of the defensive tackles. And also in there is Trevor Laws. Outside they got Howard. And they got Parker. Castle again. Quick hitter. Bradley, he's had a good day in Jaquay Parker. The former Jaquay Thomas makes the stop after a gain of five. 24 yard line. Good thing Parker was able to come over and make that tackle because he was able to make that initial defender miss. So they're trying to do anything they can to help Castle get the ball out without taking more punishment today. Quick three step drop. You've seen it on consecutive plays here Castle. on this possession. I'm surprised how he moved last week and he's, he's thinking that left knee's uh, completely healed. Absolutely. Close to it. He even surprised himself. That's what he told us last night. At, to how well he was able to move in the pocket last week. Nickel defense, third down and one. Larry Johnson at the side of Castle. And Dukeway with the block, incomplete, looking for Wade. The coverage by Sheldon Brown. Sheldon Brown did a really good job of dissecting that play. He was able to cut in front of Bobby Wade. Watch it. And Wade's got to fight for position to get to this ball. But you could see 24. <laughs> Sheldon Brown diving in try to get the interception it's just the defender did a better job of reading the route more so than the wide receiver in terms of getting to the point where the ball was going to arrive 10 Kansas City possessions sixth three and out Cole quit the punt Sean Jackson waving it off down the four three and uh, Dwan Morgan will down at about the 28 yard line for Kansas City a defense gave up 48 points last week to Drew Brees in New Orleans. The most points at home the Eagles have allowed since 1962.
against Green Bay and Vince Lombardi. First and ten here is McCoy on the handoff from Cobb. And the ball is down about the 28-yard line. There is no gain on the play in the linebacking core, and they're making the stop. Gilberry was among them, and here's the upcoming schedule for the Kansas City Chiefs, the NFC East on display. Look at that. Yeah, you got, what are that, three consecutive weeks against the NFC East and four, including today's game. And so that's murderer's row. So if you're the Kansas City Chiefs who have lost 25 of their last 27 ball games. Edwards playing the nose. Leggett is playing the cornerback across the way. Taking the place of Carr. Second down. The next caught by Seller. Hit by Brown, among others. And he's got the first down. He's up to the 43-yard line. He picks up 15. Selleck has been a terrific addition. No Kevin Curtis today because of an injury. And so Selleck has been one of the go-to guys. Matt Castle has to be green with envy. Look at the protection and the time that Kevin Cobb has to throw the football. And that's why he's able to come in and put up huge numbers, over 300 yards passing last week. And he's approaching that here today. And boy, he's found Selleck often. He's using the tight end. I think all young quarterbacks, it's the easier throw. You start to go outside the numbers, throwing the ball on the perimeter, much more difficult to have a high completion percentage. Elcher taking the place of Mays at that interior position. Linebacking court, first and 10 outside it goes as Flowers was being hit by a Macklin complete. Jackson, Tank Tyler, and Dorsey on the defensive line. Second down and three. Weaver back there with McCoy. McCoy's got a rushing touchdown today. Cobb two. LaShawn McCoy. Huge hole in the secondary brought down by Page. Some outstanding blocking on that 15-yard gain. And the fullback was the uh, bulldozer, Leonard Weaver, number 43. You know, McCoy's disappointed because he gets to the second level in college. You're used to making safeties miss, but excellent tackle from Jared Page. Look, see, he's upset. He's hanging his head. Well, in this league, they know how to tackle. But look at that, 85 yards rushing today. This is his coming out part. Westbrook is out with an ankle injury. No Kevin Curtis with the knee. McNabb has got the broken rib. It's down in 10. Come. Sell it. That will be a touchdown. A 35-yard touchdown pass on his eighth reception today for Brent Sellick. Kevin Cobb has made a living today throwing the ball over the middle and mostly over the middle to Brett Selleck. He fires this one in before Jared Page. Watch 44. You miss, you lose, you blow that tackle. It's a walk into the end zone for Brett Selleck. Boy, the Eagle has landed big time for this offense today. Cobb had 391 yards of passing last week against New Orleans has 327 today pretty good for the first two starts in his NFL career with an acres extra point Selleck gets it 35 yard strike and the Eagles are circling over their second win of the season Savage will retrieve this kickoff and leave it in the end zone you love the offense of Andy Reid and what he's done a lot of it came from his time at BYU that's right uh, under his Head coach Lavelle Edwards and Doug Schofield, who he talked about. These are the guys who provided the inspiration and the genius on offense for Andy Reid. First and ten, and then about five guys make the stop right there, including, uh, with no gain on the play, including Abi Amiri. And look who's warming up, Jeff Garcia. Yeah, Jeff been known to come in and get hot and, and make some plays. He's a guy that, you know, he's took this team to the playoffs. Just a few years ago, remember the year when Donovan McNabb went down? He goes five for one as a starter that year to take him into the playoffs. We know Mike Vick has led a team into the playoffs, so you've got a lot of experience at the quarterback position for Philadelphia. Hobbs playing one of the corners right now on that second down and 10. Larry Johnson was stopped on the play by Hobbs and uh, Akeem Jordan, the linebacker. Look at that. Look at the Pro Bowls. You've got, what, 12 Pro Bowls in between. McNabb, Garcia, and Vic, and look at the number of starts. The people were wondering with McNabb, who was yanked, in fact, for a half last year by quarterback, by coach Andy Reid, if 
if maybe this was a little salt in the wound by bringing in Garcia and bringing in Vic and what message that might be sending to McNabb the media here has been on that story. I think you've got to be prepared. What if Kevin Cobb gets injured early in this ball game? Mike Vick is not ready to handle the full package. You need someone who can come in and run the offense. Third and ten direction after Larry Johnson and he was brought down. It was uh, read so beautifully by Omar Gaither. No gain. Another three and out the seventh in 11 possessions by the Chiefs. As you take a look at the numbers by Cobb over 300 passing on the day the second consecutive week for this young quarterback and you know we're going to give Kevin Cobb a lot of credit I think you got to give Marty Morningwig the offensive coordinator and Andy Reid a lot of credit for getting their quarterbacks ready to play and they have been almost perfect have the Eagles today Cole quit to punt Jackson was back waves it off hang time of only three five and it gets uh, a nice little bounce for the Chiefs down to about the 15 yard line. So we've got uh, a lot of players coming in and the Chiefs have made some changes to it an outside backer taking the place of Rabel will be Andy Studebaker and actually he was with the Philadelphia practice squad was Studebaker last year. Originally a sixth round pick was number 96 Studebaker. You take a look at Demario Williams and McGraw who's now in at one of the safety positions and there's Andy two years out of Wheaton. And so the new running back too is in there that is Eldra Buckley. He drafted by San Diego on the practice squad last couple of years. And there's a fumble. Oh, there's a fumble. The Chiefs have got it. Wow. On the bad exchange from center to quarterback the Chiefs have jumped on it at the 20 yard line. And with the ball was McGraw. Inauspicious. Not what you want. First mistake really today by this team. Yeah. Didn't really get it to him. And that was Jamal Jackson. And I, I thought that Garcia kind of see how he pulls back before he secured the ball. Kind of just started to pull back before he actually had the ball from his center. Jamal Jackson. See the ball down on the ground. Now it's going to be kicked forward. That's where the Eagles are going to recover. It. Joe Mays is going to play as the middle linebacker right now. Tracy White is at one side of him and Foku will be the other linebacker. That was dropped. And uh, he was trying to hand off to Larry Johnson. And Matt Castle jumps on the ball. So the loss back to the 24 for the Chiefs. They had a room to run it. You could see he took his eye off the ball in a direct snap. He turned his head toward Larry Johnson before he actually caught the football. Parker is on that defensive line with Dixon. Trevor Laws is out there as well. Howard is the right defensive end. Second down 13. Charles in the backfield. And Jamal Charles will get a call. Nice block by Brandon Albert, and that is going to be six for Jamal Charles. And a flag is down. It's been against Kansas City's offense all day. Will this wipe out the touchdown run by Charles? That was a great run. It was. He's tough to bring down. Holding. Number 83. Oh. Offense. Ten yard penalty. Replay. Second down. That's uh, Mark Bradley, who caught a touchdown pass earlier in the game. Watch him make. The unblocked defender miss. He's going to make a miss, but then there's the holding there. Okay, on Sheldon Brown. Sure. Okay, now you got to let him go. Let him go. <laughs> Just all you got to do is let him go. <laughs> the That's... hand is always quicker than the eye. That's what we would say as players. I think you got to let him go. You hold him real quick, then let him go. Ten Kansas City penalties, seven on the offense today. Seven offensive penalties, and it's wiped out big gains, it seems like, almost on every one. Todd Haley told his players after getting several penalties last week, eight in all, that, hey, until we start to win games, we're not going to be given the benefit of the doubt. Second and 23, Charles is in there for Larry Johnson, and he'll bang his way to the 21-yard line, hit by Parker and grabbed by Mays, and a gain of three on the play. Todd Haley coaching up his team in terms of how to avoid those critical errors at important times in the football game. We saw Bradley on the holding call. He, he did not have to hold on to Sheldon Brown, cost his team a touchdown, but certainly have to just be more cognizant of the situation and understand that if you still have your hands wrapped around the shoulders on the outside portion of the defender, they're going to call it. It's third down and 12. Ryan with the block on the right side. There goes Castle. Dumps it off to Charles and hit on the play. Brought down by Tracy White. 
And the gain to the 16 yard line and he picks up seven yards right there. How about some movement by Matt Castle on this play getting rid of it and Charles takes a lick. Listen in. Whew. Had to clear the sinuses. Approaching the two minute warning. Well after. A loss opening week in Baltimore and losing to the Oakland Raiders last week at home. They are crushed here in Philadelphia today at the Chiefs. A go for it on fourth down. Open six. Charles back there with Castle. Blitz is on. Caught by Copper. And he back goes his way to the eight. And they got the first down. Picks up eight yards on fourth and six. That's his first catch. Copper played a couple games with Baltimore. Last year, a lot of his time with New Orleans before that. Again, the poise and presence of Matt Castle to deliver a strike while under pressure. Two minute warning. Well, the Eagles today have scored on a five yard touchdown run by McCoy, a one yard touchdown quarterback keeper by Cobb, a 64 yard touchdown pass to Jackson, a couple of field goals by Akers, a 35 yard touchdown pass to Selleck. Chiefs got a touchdown pass to Bradley. 13 yards from Castle, former New England Patriot quarterback who last year taking the place of Tom Brady was 10 and 5. First and goal at the nine. Charles in the backfield. Blocked by Ryan, the tight end. That is caught by Bobby Wade, and he will go into the end zone for a nine yard touchdown reception. Hit the last second by Hanson. Second touchdown pass by Matt Castle. Yeah, you love the way that Bobby Wade attacks the goal line. Watch him get vertical, breaking one tackle, then another to hit the goal line and get it into the end zone. He was very aggressive, yards after the catch. And these are the kind of plays they're going to need from their wide receivers, the kind of plays Matt Castle need for his guys to make. Here's the extra point now by Ryan Suckup. Final pick of the 09 draft. Holding will be Dustin Colfer. So you can see a lot of empty seats here in Philadelphia. It's turned out to be a beautiful day. A lot of rain last night and early this morning. Well, do you want to give, as you take a look at Michael Vick, you want to give us your impressions of Vick today and, and what his day was all about after the big buildup, his first time on an NFL field since 06? Not a lot of production, but I think for a guy who hasn't played the meaningful game, and a thousand and one days after such a long time you can see there's still a little bit of rust and he told us there would be but the key is is no egregious errors no turnovers of the football we already saw Jeff Garcia who hadn't been with this team long you saw in the first snap he put the ball on the ground and turned it over and Jeff Garcia went through training camp with the Oakland Raiders so I think it would have been easy for Vic to maybe come in and make some mistakes or poor decisions he was able to avoid that and now he has to build upon it continue to shake off the rust. Suck up. Looks like he is setting up for the onside kick, and the Eagles have got that front line all converged on, and Chiefs will send their numbers over there as well. That is caught. Is it Brett Selleck? I think it was. Why not? He's got a <laughs> touchdown pass. He's caught eight uh, passes today, or seven passes today for Selleck. Eight, and a touchdown reception for 35 yards. Well, the Eagles get the AFC West, which they're licking their chops at, and now they're yeah. going to get a bye for next week, so another week to heal Westbrook, heal McNabb, heal Kevin Curtis. Now, that will not be an easy game out in Oakland, let's face it, because the Raiders are, their defense, I think, with the addition of Richard Seymour, they're better on the defensive side of the ball. You know they're going to put up a fight. Uh, there, in my mind, are no easy weeks in the National Football League, but if you're looking at that schedule over the next few weeks, uh, I think the Philadelphia Eagles should be able to rack up some wins. Garcia under center first and ten and Buckley Eldra Buckley hit by Tank Tyler grabbed by Tamba Hali. it's a gain of four down to the 36 yard line the clock continues to tick and she's although they have got two timeouts we'll let it go so as you take a look at some of the numbers not only here but around the NFL Cobb number two so far in that rotation I think you're going to see an eagle on just about every every board even uh, you know with the rushing leaders how about Maurice Jones Drew having a huge day he is Brandon Jacobs with 92 yards big day for Sean Jackson with the touchdown catch 149 yards of reception yards today and Garcia is going to go to a knee and the Eagles will look forward to their bye and go to two and one as they've got to compete in uh, perhaps the toughest division in the NFL the NFL NFL Eastern Division. Oh absolutely and that's going to be a run but hey I, I think if you were to talk to 
the Kansas City Chiefs they understand the work that's cut out for them and I think if you're Andy Reid you feel good about the work you put in this week and you're going to take some of these plays back in the Wildcat you're going to analyze them you're going to help Mike Vick to get better you're going to be thoroughly pleased with your backup quarterback Kevin Cobb and the fact that he had over 300 yards passing for two consecutive weeks third and seven NFC East where the Eagles are and that should be the final play of the game so Michael Vick he is brought back and the Eagles come up with a nice win today tough day for Matt Castle although he did throw a couple touchdown passes one to Bradley for 13. Any words of hope for Chiefs fans. Well you know what you just got to go back to work. I think you trust in your coach and Todd Haley because he's going to make sure these guys work every single week to earn a starting job. And you got to love the way he dial up plays. All right the final score is in and Philadelphia has beaten the Chiefs 34 to 14.